look who's back. It's been a minute, but she's back, the RT95. If you guys have been following along with the channel, you know that I bricked the radio. I did it, nothing wrong with the radio, I screwed up, I admit it. Take a bigger man to admit when he's wrong, when he's made a mistake, that bigger man is me. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. All joking aside, I did break the radio. I did send it back for customer support. It did come back. We're gonna see if it's repaired and continue the journey of getting this thing to be a digital mode radio without a mic. Let's go. Back to the new and improved workbench with the new and improved radio. This thing has been all around the world. I think, I think that's my handwriting. The label has been removed. This could be my box, I don't know. All right, the radio is back, but this is a replacement radio, so maybe they couldn't get it fixed either. It says any tone up here, and mine said Redivis, but it has a Redivis sticker back there. So some work has been done to this. That's a loose power connector rattling against the back of the radio, against the heatsink, but that's fine though. That's just, that's normal looseness from the way these connectors are designed. And we don't need instructions. Instructions are what make it so you don't break radios, and we break radios here. If you like watching somebody take radios... Really? So if you like watching somebody take radios beyond their limits and bring them back from the edge of destruction, this is the channel for you. Be sure you are subscribed. Let's get it plugged in and learn something. And I have a power cord already made up for this T-type connector for mobile radios that goes to power poles. Love me some power poles. Oh, interesting. It comes on with my call sign in it and it makes some noise. That works. All right, that works. Go into memory mode. Error. Can't go into memory mode. Maybe there's no memories. Man, it's been a while since I used this radio. Go into function. Function menu, channel menu. Let's get that beep turned off real quick. Ah, oh, turn it down to one. All right, let's plug in a dummy load and see if it will transmit. This is my Cellwave Monster Dummy Load. This thing is awesome. You can find these things on eBay. These things come out of cell tower sites. So it's uh, some pulled equipment, but that's what we love about being ham radio operators is all the used gear that we get to fix stuff up with. All right, so we're in the dummy load. We are plugged in, we're turned on. This is high power and we transmit on high power. So 13.4 volts, I'm using my Astron power supply, and when I key, it, key down, you can see it goes 11.7 volts. Let's turn on another radio. This is the VRN76 from Vero. This is a fantastic little radio. It's already on the APRS frequency. I'm gonna try and transmit from this radio through this dummy load into that radio. And it's picked up. Awesome. KM9G. Perfect. And where we need to go from here is back to the project. So you can see there is a speaker hole down there, a microphone hole up there, and this thing is lit. So that means that on this plug right here, and more importantly, in this socket right here, you have power, ground, audio in, audio out, and push to talk. Those are the five signals that we need to play with APRS, which is where I was with this thing. So we've got this microphone out, that's going back in the box, hopefully to never be on the radio again. But we'll see, never say never, right? So it looks to me like I done screwed up the faceplate of the radio really badly and they had to replace it with a spare they had in hand. And then also looks like they did a factory reset and programmed my call sign into it. Pretty cool. Now let's get some other parts out of here to play with. All right, need that. This is what I am thinking is pretty awesome. I saw this, I had to have it. This is from my friends over at Tree Dicks. Don't ask me why they named their company Tree Dicks, but they did. We can turn this off, we're gonna leave this on for now. Closing. This is the same company that made the USB tester board that we use to test all of our cables out. There'll be a link to that video up in the corner up there. But this is gonna be pretty cool. This is a solder kit project, and what you do is you take these RJ45 jacks and plug them in. Get in there, get in there. All right, awesome. That one goes in there. That one goes in there. And then you can do terminal blocks. So you can put some wires on there that way, or you can do header pins so that you can do some testing that way. And since I have two of these, I'm gonna do one of each. 
So let's get that built up. And this is my USB powered pine sill soldering iron that we're gonna use for this project. And it'll run off of a 5525 barrel jack so you can put it right on your workbench or it'll run off of USB-C. So this thing is fantastic for portable work. One of the best parts about this thing is that I can run it off of one of my solar generators or USB battery banks or something along those lines. These RJ45 jacks plunk down pretty straightforward. And so since they snap into place with these plastic pieces, I can just go ahead and solder straight up and not have to worry about alignment or anything because they're gonna be aligned. This side of the board has an indication of a footprint for the RJ45 jack. As a result of that, I'm putting everything on top of the board. It also says RJ45 breakout on the top, so you can read that from the top. And then on the bottom, it's got the manufacturer's name. And I'm pretty sure they are pretty proud of their name, so they wouldn't wanna hide tree dicks underneath of the RJ45 plug. So that's how I am going about installing this since there aren't any instructions. But it's also relatively straightforward. So we're gonna get after it. I dig me some soldering. It's it's always fun to do. So what this breakout board is going to allow us to do is run the microphone into the board. First off, it'll be an inline coupler if nothing, if of no other value, but it allows us to run the microphone to the board and then from the board to the radio, and I can intercept the signals on the oscilloscope. And so we'll be able to learn what we did that caused this thing to not work and figure out all of the voltages and do some do some real ham radio stuff. So this part here is attached to the outside of the RJ45 socket, and it is also attached to the entire ground plane on the board. So it's gonna need a little extra heat in order to get itself running. And so I'm gonna turn this thing up. Normally I run at 640, I just turned it up to 840. All right, there we go like a champ. All right, that looks pretty good. This is the one that I'm gonna put the screw terminals on, so we're gonna get those screw terminals put on right quick. One side of these has a little bit of a flared well, and the other side doesn't, so I'm gonna consider this the back side and the flared well to be the, the user-facing side. And then what I do with something like this, as opposed to the RJ45 jacks, the RJ45 jacks had those little plastic holders to hold them in place. So with this one, I'm gonna tack down just one part of it and then verify that she's good, and she actually does look really good. And then reheat this little tab here, and push that flush with the board with my spare hand. And now you can go ahead and tack down all the rest of these parts and then just repeat for the other side. Okay, and now we have them all done. One set with header pins and one set with terminal blocks. Awesome, and I've got a couple of spares. Love me some spares. Okay, so regular old ethernet cable will plug into one side and then that ethernet cable will plug into the radio. And now that microphone that you thought we were done with plugs into the other side. And we can turn the radio on. We're back to our favorite frequency. The microphone is lit up. PTT works, no problem. I'm still into the dummy load over here, so don't, don't worry about me not identifying or nothing. All right, so now let's do one, four, six, five, two, zero instead. That works, A, B, C, D, C is power. All right, works great. And that is that. All right, so this is where it gets really interesting. After I got this thing built, I got after it for about two and a half, three hours on the oscilloscope. I phoned a friend, I asked for all kinds of help. What I found out is I think that they're lying to me about the uh, pin out on the microphone. We got it to work before on APRS. There's videos at the end of this video showing that we got it to work with Vox mode, showing we got it to work with PTT. And then I did some experimenting after all of that and bricked the radio. Now the radio's fixed. Now we've got this thing. There's something going on. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's easier just to show you. So now that we have this thing here all built with the terminal blocks and this one here all built with the connectors, the header pins, you can do something like this. These are called DuPont wires. If you didn't know, they have a name. They're called DuPont wires. What you get in the box is this rainbow colored mess o wires. And what you can do is you can peel these guys off so that you have one wire if you need it, or if you're making a, a header for something, you can have one, two, three, four wires. And then they're all color coded. So you can say, Yellow goes to yellow, and red goes to red, and brown goes to brown, and blah, blah, blah. But this is where this stuff gets pretty cool. So these are all a standard size. So the DuPont wire just slips right on, and there's your connection. Ta-da! Make and break, real easy. And oh, wait, that's not the right pin. That's the right pin. Or I think I should put it there, or whatever the case may be. So there's your, that, that's why these things are cool. And for the terminal block side of things, these things just slide right in like that. And then you screw it down. And now I can connect my 
oscilloscope probe or alligator clip, or I can plug this into, you know, another DuPont wire and extend it out, or I can breadboard with it because these things fit right into breadboards. So these things are fantastic for prototyping work, which is what we're in the middle of doing here. But for right now, I don't need that. I need this. All right, so our microphone is lit up and working. And we can just do this with a regular old multimeter. I'm gonna put the pin out on the screen and then we're gonna go through and talk about why this doesn't line up. So the only drawback I have to this is, I like, I like the small form factor, I dig it, but the numbers of the pins is on the bottom of the board. So first off, let's, let's show you one thing here that, that fuddled me up a bit while I was playing with this thing. Most of your footprints have a square, there we go, we're in beep mode. They have a square outline for pin one and then round outlines for everything else. So if I take pin one here and I connect it to pin one here, that's pin one and pin one are the same. Okay, great. So you don't have to worry about the fact that like these two here clips up, this is pin one, this is pin one. But if I take this and I rotate it around so that they mate, like they look like they do on the board, pin one is now down here and up here. So I'm actually taking pin one and connecting it to pin eight. So that, that gets to be a little confusing. So this board has actually done that at the circuit board level. So if you look at it, pin one on the left, pin one on the left, 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 left is now Matt made it up. So I have to turn it over in order to do that. I hope that makes, that makes sense. But it's done internally on the circuit board. So even though these things here go down, the clips go down on the circuit board level, everything has already made it up. So that's what I was trying to show you is pin one here and pin one here make that fantastic beeping sound. So now that we know that, we also can check that pin one here and pin one here is the same and there's no, there's no cross connection anywhere else. So anytime I'm talking about pin one, I'm talking about the actual pin one and I don't have to rearrange for the fact that this looks like it needs to be rearranged. It doesn't, they're smart, they figured it out, and now we're smarter for the whole experience as well. Okay, so where am I going with this? All right, so let's switch meters. This is a different meter. This is the Kiweeds KM601. We'll put the black probe back on ground. That's pin one, we'll do pin two. And we've got, let me get my, my chopsticks going here. Pin one and pin two is PTT. So if I PTT on the mic, we're at 0.27, PTT. 0.27 to 0 0.30, 0 0.4 on the peak, I saw one. So we're seeing a, a differential there. We're seeing a state of change. So, okay, fine. That's not what I would expect. I'd expect, you know, plus five, minus five, or, you know, plus five when it's keyed open, and then zero when you key it down, or I'd expect to see um, zero when it's open and plus five when you key it down. I'd expect you to, you know, make or break a circuit. All right, this is pin one and pin three. Pin three is the microphone. And I haven't PTT'd or anything, but the microphone should still be doing microphone type stuff. So when I'm talking into the microphone versus silence, so 1.4 to 1.39. All right, it's not even moving now that I'm talking. I'm still talking into the microphone nothing's moving at all. So that's the, the mic positive connection. And then pin four, so one, two, three, four. Pin four is the mic ground. Wait a minute, that's 1.4. And mic positive is negative 1.4, negative 1.4, negative 1.4. That's a, that's a story that don't make no sense. One, two, three, four, five. Pin five is the up button on the microphone. Negative 4.7, let's push the up button. And you hear it beep, that's when I'm pushing it. And this is also a push and hold button. So holding, no change. All right, pin six. Pin six is the down button. So again, I have the negative probe on the ground and I have the red probe on pin six. And once I stop moving, there we go. All that voltage fluctuation was me moving my hand. So this is the, the other button, the down button. Nothing when I push it, let's push and hold. Nothing when I push and hold. Three digits of precision, nothing when I push and hold. 
Okay, let's change to pin seven. This should be five volts. That doesn't look like five volts. Minus one, minus one volts. That should read five volts. This is pin eight. Pin eight is serial data, keypad serial data. So if I read that, that should be, you know, some type of serial value. When I push the number one, it should send a signal. Each different button should send a different voltage signal. But this is momentary and I might not be capturing fast enough on the meter. But either way, that doesn't, like a lot of this doesn't make any sense. So again, pin seven should be five volts, minus one. Ta-da. So the life of a ham continues. I wanted to share with you where we are in the journey currently. It's been a while since I have given you an update on the RT95 project. We're still moving forward. We still got to figure out what's going on with what. I just don't know where to go from here. So I did spend about three hours on the phone with my friend Jim from FEP Labs Radio, playing with the oscilloscope, probing things around, trying to make heads or tails of this diagram. And we didn't make any heads or tails. I'm getting back at it. If you have any info, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, there's a video right here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.